I'm presenting 50 puzzle positions for you to solve that all arose from the King's Gambit. You'll find here absolutely typical tactics that you'll encounter when you play this opening. So in solving these, it's great to be familiar with these ideas and so you'll know exactly what you can try and trap your opponent with, but also very good to be aware of these kind of tactics that you might fall into yourself. So using this video interactive format, you'll normally have to just input one move, but sometimes watch out for a supplementary question as well. Now I've selected these positions on the basis of the repertoire that I set out in my earlier DVD on the King's Gambit. So you could look at this as a kind of refresher course, but of course, these themes are absolutely typical for the King's Gambit. So even if you look at other variations, well, it's useful for you. There's also a supplementary database of more puzzles for you to solve. So don't forget that as well. So before you go through these 50 positions, what I want to do is show you these, well, typical ideas that you're going to be encountering. So it'll give you a little idea of what to look for. So first of all, let's take a look at this position. Well, here, this arose from a folk bear counter gambit where black has already gone wrong and white wins with knight takes knight, pawn takes knight, and now queen h5 check. You can see a simple double attack checks the king, but also attacks the bishop. So this diagonal, the h5, e8 diagonal, is so often a weakness for black in the king's gambit. So always watch out for that one. But in general, um, there are open diagonals to, to both kings. So here is something that is very typical. So here we go, e4, e5, f4, and d5, for example. And here it is fatal if white plays pawn takes e5 because of queen h4 check. So this diagonal is also weak. And here, well, black wins very simply after g3 and queen e4 check, again, a double attack. Or if we go back, if king e2, then queen e4 check, followed by bishop c5 and mate in a few moves. Uh, but watch out for this in several other variations. So for example, if instead knight c6, same applies, pawn takes e5, queen h4 check also wins in, in the same way. Or if we go back, d6, again, pawn takes e5, queen h4 check, or one last one, bishop c5, and again, pawn takes pawn on e5 is fatal because of queen h4 check. Seems very obvious, but I tell you, I've fallen into one of these once <laughs> playing, playing white, so um, yeah, pride comes before a fall. So watch out for that one, another weak diagonal. And here, well, it's not just those diagonals on the king side you have to watch out for. So look at this position. Here, white has just moved the queen up to d3, ready to castle on the queen side. And here, black played knight f8, wanting to free the queen side pieces. But here, queen b5 check is winning. So watch out for this diagonal as well. Uh, and again, a double attack winning the knight on h5. To be honest, it's rare that a queen comes to b5, um, but you do see this. More often, you'll find a bishop coming to b5 with either a, a very nasty check or a nasty pin, which, with using some tactic, will win material. And what about this one? Ah, yes. Watch out for catching your opponent's king in the middle. You know, very often you'll find your opponent will linger with, with castling or is just caught up, you know, taking material. Here, black has been very greedy and has taken a second pawn. 
But here, even though this is an endgame, white got a very powerful attack with knight d5, threatening the pawn on c7. And here it's simply not possible to play knight a6 because of bishop takes knight. So black had to move the king. Now, once the king is stuck in the middle, then white obviously can build a very good attack. And here, well, h3 was played, which was strong, but actually knight f6 check is already extremely nasty for black and bishop h4. So catching the king in the middle, a very common theme. And here, well, the weakness of the f7 square. With a bishop pointed there, of course, this is very common. Supposedly the weakest square on the chessboard. And that is a very common scenario in the king's gambit. Here, this arose from a cunning variation where, well, the best move for black is to give up a pawn with d5 just to kind of free the queenside pieces a little bit. But here, black very anxiously played the bishop back to e7, which is already fatal. Bishop takes f7 check is a winning move. And if well, king takes bishop, knight e5 check. Doesn't matter how black defends here, it's gone basically. King e8 and now queen h5 check. Again, the weakness of that diagonal and after g6, knight g6, well, that was it for black. And one last position. Sometimes your king, your opponents will be able to escape to the king's side by castling, but that doesn't mean the adventures are over. Watch out for the weakness of this diagonal. And here, well, white managed to spring a classic Greek gift with bishop takes h7 check, followed by knight g5. This is very nice, actually, because after king h6, excuse me, king g6, queen h4 threatens mate on h7. And here there's a very subtle winning move, actually. Queen h3. I do enjoy a Greek gift sacrifice. Uh, that was a winning move with these threats. So hopefully you're now ready to go into solving these 50 positions. Uh, good luck and, well, have great fun. That's what the King's Gambit is all about. Happy solving.